Chapter 5. What We Do Now. I see my patterns, and I choose to make changes. Decide to change. Throwing up your hands in horror at what we may call mess or our lives and just giving up are the ways many people react at this point. Others get angry at themselves or at life and also give up. By giving up, I mean deciding, it's all hopeless and impossible to make any changes, so why try? The rest of it goes, just stay the way you are. At least you know how to handle that pain. You don't like it, but it is familiar, and you hope it won't get any worse. To me, habitual anger is like sitting in a corner with a dunce cap on. Does this sound familiar? Something happens, and you get angry. Something else happens, and you get angry again. Something else happens, and once again you get angry. But you never go beyond getting angry. What does that do? It's foolish reaction to waste your time only getting angry. It's also a refusal to perceive life in a new and different way. It would be much more helpful to ask yourself how you are creating so many situations to get angry at. What are you believing that causes all these frustrations? What are you giving out that attracts in others the need to irritate you? Why do you believe that to get your way you need to get angry? Whatever you give out comes back to you. The more you give out anger, the more you are creating situations for you to get angry at, like sitting in a corner with a dunce on, getting nowhere. Does this paragraph bring up feeling of anger? Good. It must be hitting home. This is something you could be willing to change. Make a decision to be willing to change. If you really want to know how stubborn you are, just approach the idea of being willing to change. We all want to have our lives change, to have situations become better and easier, but we don't want to have to change. We could prefer that they change. In order to have this happen, we must change inside. We must change our way of thinking, change our way of speaking, change our way of expressing ourselves. Only then will the outer changes occur. This is the next step. We are now fairly clear on what the problems are, and where they came from. Now it is time to be willing to change. I have always had a streak of stubbornness within me. Even now sometimes when I decide to make a change in my life, this stubbornness can come to the surface and my resistance to changing my thinking is strong. I can temporarily become self-righteous, angry and withdrawn. Yes, this still goes on within me after all these years of work. It's one of my lessons. However, when this happens now, I know I'm hitting an important point of change. Every time I decide to make change in my life, to release something else, I'm going ever deep into myself to do this. Each old layer must give way in order to be replaced with new thinking. Some of it is easy, and some of it is like trying to lift a boulder with a feather. The more tenaciously I hold on to an old belief when I say I want to make change, the more I know this is an important one for me to release. It is only by learning these things that I can teach others. It is my opinion that many really good teachers do not come from joyful households where all was easy. They come from much pain and suffering and they've worked through the layers to reach the place where they can now help others to become free. Most good teachers are continually working to release even more to remove ever deeper layers of limitations. This becomes a lifetime occupation. The main difference between the way I used to work at releasing beliefs, and the way I do it today, is that now I don't have to be angry at myself in order to do so. I no longer choose to believe that I'm a bad person just because I find something else to change within me. House cleaning. The mental work I do now is like cleaning a house. I go through my mental books and examine the thoughts and beliefs in them. Some I love, so I polish and shine them and make them even more useful. Some I notice need replacement or repair, and I get around to them as I can. Some are like yesterday's newspapers and old magazines or clothing that's no longer suitable. These I either give away or toss into the trash, and I let them be gone forever. It's not necessary for me to be angry or to feel I'm a bad person in order to do this. Exercise, I am willing to change. Let's use the affirmation, I am willing to change. Repeat this often. I am willing to change. I am willing to change. You can touch your throat as you say this. The throat is the energy center in the body where change takes place. By touching your throat, you are acknowledging you are in the process of changing. 
Be willing to allow the changes to happen when they come up in your life. Be aware that where you do not want to change is exactly the area where you need to change the most. I am willing to change. The universal intelligence is always responding to your thoughts and words. Things will definitely begin to change as you make these statements. Many ways to change working with my ideas is not the only way to change. There are many other methods that work quite well. In the back of the book I have included a list of many of the ways you could approach your own growth process. Just think of a few now. There is the spiritual approach, there is the mental approach, and the physical approach. Holistic healing includes body, mind and spirit. You can begin in any one of these areas as long as you eventually include all the areas. Some begin with the mental approach and do workshops or therapy. Some begin the spiritual area with meditation or prayer. When you begin to clean your house, it really doesn't matter which rook you start in. Just begin in the area that appeals to you most. The others will happen almost by themselves. Junk food eaters who begin on the spiritual level often find that they are drawn to nutrition. They meet a friend or find a book or go to a class that brings them to an understanding that what they put into their bodies will have a lot to do with how it feels and look. One level will always lead to another as long as there is the willingness to grow and change. I give very little nutritional advice because I have discovered that not all system work for some people. I do have a local network of good practitioners in the holistic field, and I refer clients to them when I see the necessity for nutritional knowledge. This is an area where you must find your own way or go to a specialist who can test you. Many of the books on nutrition have been written by persons who were very ill and worked out a system for their own healing. Then they wrote a book to tell everyone else the methods they used. However, everyone is not alike. For instance, the macrobiotic and the natural raw food diets are two totally different approaches. The raw food people never cook anything, seldom eat bread or grains, and very careful not to eat fruits and vegetables at the same meal. And they never use salt. The macrobiotic people cook almost all of their food, have a different system of food combining, and use a lot of salt. Both systems work. Both systems have healed bodies. But neither system is good for everybody's body. My personal nutritional approach is simple. If it grows, eat it. If it doesn't grow, don't eat it. Be conscious of your eating. It's like paying attention to attention to our thoughts. We also can learn to pay attention to our bodies and the signals we get when we eat in different ways. Cleaning the mental house after a lifetime of indulging in negative mental thoughts is a bit like going on a good nutritional program after a lifetime of indulging in junk foods. They both can often create hailing crises. As you begin to change your physical diet, the body begins to throw off the accumulation of toxic residue, and as this happens, you can feel rather rotten for a day or two. So it is when you make a decision to change the mental thought patterns your circumstances can begin to seem worse for a while. Recall for a moment the end of a Thanksgiving dinner. The food is eaten, and it's time to clean the turkey pan. The pan is all burnt and crusty, so you put in hot water and soap and let it soak for a while. Then you begin to scrape the pan. Now you really have a mess, it looks worse than ever. But, if you just keep scrubbing away, Soon you will have a pan as good as new. It's the same thing with cleaning up a dried-on, crusty mental pattern. When we soak it with new ideas, all the goop comes to the surface to look at. Just keep doing the new affirmations, and soon you will totally cleared an old limitation. Exercise, willing to change. So we have decided we are willing to change, and we will use any and all methods that work for us. Let me describe one of the methods I use with myself and with others. First, go look in a mirror and say to yourself, I am willing to change. Notice how you feel. If you are hesitant or resistant or just don't want to change, ask yourself why. What old belief you are holding on to. Please don't scold yourself, just notice what it is. I'll bet that belief has been causing you a lot of trouble. I wonder where it came from. Do you know? Whether we know where it came from or not, let's do something to dissolve it, now. Again, go to the mirror and look deep into your own eyes, touch your throat, and say out loud ten times, I am willing to release all resistance. 
Mirror work is very powerful. As children we received most of our negative messages from others looking us straight in the eye and perhaps shaking a finger at us. Whenever we look into the mirror today most of us will say something negative to ourselves. We either criticize our looks or berate ourselves for something. To look yourself straight in the eye and make a positive declaration about yourself is, in my opinion, the quickest way to get results with affirmations. Affirmation. In the infinity of life where I am. All is perfect, whole and complete. I no longer choose to believe in old limitations and lack. I now choose to begin to see myself. As the universe sees me, perfect, whole, and complete. The truth of my being is that I was created. Perfect, whole, and complete. I will always be perfect, whole, and complete. I now choose to live my life from this understanding. I am in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. All is well in my world. Here ends chapter 5. Next chapter is on resistance to change.